This is a story about four researchers and the time they attempted to give an AI bot emotions to study the effect on its performance in a game of Age of Mythology. It's a story about personality traits, emotional perceptions, and what happens when the smart and curious have access to a bit of time and funding. But most importantly, it's a story about real-time strategy games. But before we get too deep into the details, let's clarify what we're talking about here. RTS AI bots are composed of scripts and functions, and there is no way that we can give them real emotions no matter how many episodes of Sanctuary Moon they decide to watch. But we can attempt to simulate them, and as everything else within the game is a simulation, this would appear to be a pretty reasonable substitution. But how could this be of any benefit? If a bot chooses to do something irrational because of a simulated state of heightened emotion, wouldn't that just lead to a loss in performance? Well, not necessarily. Predictability is one of the key problems with scripted solutions. If the bot knows our fighting game character is close to death, the optimal move is the jab, because although it's got low damage, it's very hard for us to block. But we know this, so we place our guard in that direction. But if the bot is emotionally charged, it could make the irrational decision to use a kick instead. It's slower, but we're not ready for it, so it might get through. The occasional irrational or illogical move can really throw off an opponent, either because they didn't expect it, or because they assume that by making that move, then the initiator must know something that they do not. Anyway, now that we're on the same page, let's move on with our story. Our scene opens in 2004 in Enschede, a city of some 160,000 situated in the eastern part of the Netherlands. Enschede is home to the University of Twente, a technical research establishment founded in 1961. Within the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Mathematics and Computer Science is a student named Gerben Meyer who's working on his bachelor's degree. He needs to pick a subject for his thesis, a vitally important piece of work which will determine the outcome of the several years of study that a bachelor degree entails. It needs to be of some academic value and be entirely of his own work, as well as being interesting, achievable and worthy of his time. The fruits of his labour result in a paper entitled Emotional Agents – How Personalities Change Behaviour. I won't keep you in suspense, everything turns out rather well. Gerben receives his bachelor's degree and then after some additional study goes on to receive a master's and then a doctorate and finally moves into a very successful career in computer science. Well done Gerben. But let's talk a little bit about his thesis. It features something called an emotion connectionist model that dictates how emotions affect the actions of an agent. An agent could be anything, perhaps an NPC or an AI bot. It essentially has four different inputs, pain, pleasure, confusion and clarity. These states ultimately affect something it calls arousal. No sniggering in the back there. This is simply a fancy term that denotes how worked up our agent is. If an action creates a lot of pain and little pleasure, then that action is considered undesirable to our agent. And conversely, if it generates lots of pleasure and little pain, it becomes desirable. However, this is only half of the puzzle. There are also two related factors, confusion and clarity. These serve to amplify the levels of pain and pleasure. If something good happens, and you understand why, because you have a high amount of clarity, then the level of pleasure is increased. It's the same on the other side. Levels of pain are exacerbated when combined with high levels of confusion, as it's especially unpleasant to experience pain without a good reason. Individuality starts to enter into the formula when this is combined with a three-dimensional personality space. There are essentially three different ranges added. Introvert, extrovert, stable neurotic and explorer preserver. How far along each range a certain personality is will affect the magnitude of arousal, pain and pleasure and confusion and clarity. If an agent is especially neurotic, it will be more likely to make decisions based on the level of pain present even if a more balanced personality would read the situation as favourable. Similarly, an agent with a particularly high tendency towards the explorer trait would be far more comfortable with confusion compared to that of a preserver. All of this lovely theory was built into a prototype turn-based simulation. It consisted of a tarred game world scattered with pools, trees and rocks. Sometimes the pools would contain water, sometimes the trees would contain apples and sometimes the rocks would yield herbs. 
The agent needed to eat and drink to survive and it would need herbs to recover lost health. There would also be predators roaming around the game world. These would mostly move at random, although if they arrived at an area with the resources that an agent would need, they would likely stick around and wait for the agent to arrive. The agent itself knew the location of all of the pools, trees and rocks, but it didn't know if they currently contained anything to harvest, nor did the agent know the location of the predators. There was a basic line of sight system, so this information would only be revealed if the agent was close enough. Each turn the agent could do one of several predetermined actions. It could move towards resource locations, it could eat or drink the resources in question, or it could either attack or flee from a predator. It also had the ability to do nothing. The need for food and water would increase over time, and health would decrease when fighting. Confusion and clarity were calculated based on how straightforward a situation was. If the agent was hungry and there was an apple in sight, clarity would rise. If there was a predator in the way, confusion would increase. The actions the agent could take were influenced by the amount of arousal it was currently subjected to. At high levels, it would be far more likely to do things like flee from a predator, and it would only attempt the mundane, such as moving to a tree, if levels were low enough. The study looked at three configurations for the simulation. Extrovert Stable Explorer, or ESE, Introvert Neurotic Preservers, INP, with maximum levels in all of those traits, and a third more stable example, which was a midpoint between the other two types. The paper reported that the main difference between the types was highlighted when a predator turned up. The ESE agent was less susceptible to pain, and therefore way more likely to engage in a fight and die to a predator whereas the INP agent would generally forget about food while it was running away from predators and just end up starving to death. The in-between agent had the greatest survival times, probably because it would fight when it needed to, but still remember to eat. But what does all of this have to do with Age of Mythology? Well, skip forward two years and down a few hundred miles to Austria. Enter our four protagonists. Christoph Hermann, Helmuth Melcher and Stefan Rank of the Austrian Research Institute for Artificial Intelligence and Robert Trappel of the Institute of Medical Cybernetics and AI. These four researchers are intrigued by the paper we just discussed. They wonder what would happen if you made an emotionally driven AI opponent for a real-time strategy game. It's not that they were interested in creating a competition-winning challenge that even the most veteran players would find difficult to handle. Instead, they were looking to see if a less rational bot would simply be more fun to play against. This is the problem with AI bots. They are always trying to make the most rational decision in order to win. If they do something poorly, it's not because they just felt like it, it's because their programming was lacking. They make decisions based on whatever is most likely to achieve the desired strategic outcome. If they build too many knights, it's not because they really like knights, it's because of some boring reason like they didn't have enough wood for archers. Rational strategic thinking may make them more challenging to defeat, but it might not make them particularly interesting and as such fun to play against. So the question that our four intrepid Austrian researchers attempted to answer was what would happen if we gave an AI bot a personality? I'm not quite sure why they chose Asian mythology as their test bed. I can only imagine they already had some fondness and familiarity with the game. It's also particularly well suited to modification, containing a complex scripting system that's relatively easy to work with. The only other criteria they had was one of reasonable competency. Their bot needed to be at least as good at the game as the standard AI on hard difficulty. They wanted to make it more interesting, sure, but they didn't want its abilities to be too hampered as an easy victory is not a rewarding one for a human opponent. They derived their emotional model from a combination of the two options presented in Gerben Meyer's paper. It was based on the same principles, but the approach varied slightly to take into account competing emotions. Rather than pairs of emotions like pain and pleasure being a scale on the same axis, they split them into two separate entities so their agent could experience high levels of both at the same time. If an agent won an engagement but lost a lot of units, it would be subjected to high levels of both pain and pleasure to simulate the negative feelings of losing so many units but also the positive ones of winning the overall engagement. This is a diagram of their emotional model. 
Changes are determined by environmental factors, and the magnitude of those changes is governed by personality. Artificial agents with a high degree of openness would experience higher levels of confusion, whereas neurotic agents would experience higher emotional levels overall. With these parameters established, they created four different personality profiles, which they labelled defensive, aggressive, balanced and neurotic. The defensive bot would be agreeable, conscientious and open, while the aggressive character would be extroverted and altogether less open and agreeable. The balanced bot had a midpoint of all of these traits, and the neurotic bot would be similar but have the neuroticism dialed all the way up to the maximum. Unfortunately for us, the paper is very light on the details of the actual implementation. It doesn't go into the nuts and bolts of how input and output was managed. However, we can use a few clues in the text and our knowledge of the paper this was based on to make some assumptions about how it may have worked under the hood. We know that it would have to be goal-driven and, like the simple turn-based agent, have a list of actions it would be able to perform. Though, in this case, instead of simple actions like eat apple, they would be more likely to be general strategies it would aim for. We can easily imagine that the higher the arousal levels, the more it would favour the extreme options, and it would only be partial to basic options when its arousal levels were low. In a mild state, the bot would probably opt for some pretty low intensity options, expanding the economy, creating workers and setting up harvesting operations. Bots with higher levels of clarity would be more likely to explore, as this would impact the levels of pleasure gained from obtaining new information and discovering new sources of raw materials. Bots with low levels of the extrovert trait would be less susceptible to pain and would have far less of a problem sending units to harass the enemy. The pain of these units dying wouldn't be so much of a problem, so the levels of arousal cause would stay reasonably low and not cause the bot much of an issue. You could imagine that in a higher state of emotion that the bot would be far more likely to send desperate attacks against the enemy, even if it didn't really have enough forces available to overwhelm them or to quickly replenish the forces it lost doing it. The defensive bot, being agreeable and open, developed a tendency to focus on its early game economy. Only later in the game would it gain enough hype to start focusing on its military, but it takes a good amount of time to get there. It's worth noting that none of these bots were operating on a fixed strategy and they could and did change their strategies during a game if they received enough of the right input. The defensive bot might not be as easily affected by pain as some of the other characters, but subject it to enough of it and the bot would respond accordingly. Being more middle of the road, the normal bot was far more likely to adapt its strategies as the game state changed. It wasn't especially tuned to any one emotional trait, but it was also not especially dull to any of them either, and as such it was more likely to respond reasonably to the evolving situation. The neurotic bot was a different story altogether. Because all of the emotional input was severely heightened, it was far more extreme in its responses. It would be very aggressive, attacking early and building outposts near to its opponent's base. It would make irrational assessments about its own position and frequently overestimate the amount of resources it had available. It was essentially very highly strung and it would make rash and extreme decisions where the other bots would make far more measured and reasonable ones. What's interesting is that all of the emotionally driven bots outperformed the out of the box AI. The researchers set up a string of 28 games. Each of their four emotional models would play seven matches against the default hard AI, and the results of those games would be examined. The emo bots won 26 out of the 28 games, with each game lasting around 40 minutes. The defensive and the normal emotional bots each won six out of their seven games, and the aggressive bot won all seven. What surprised the researchers was that the neurotic bot, which was both aggressive and erratic, actually outperformed all of the rest. As well as winning all of its games, it did it in record time, with an average game length of just under 32 minutes. This was some 10 minutes quicker than even the aggressive bot. Now, I'm not sure if we can really draw any conclusions from any of this. It's a pretty lightweight paper with a limited number of tests and parameters and lacking a lot of detail. The researchers do state that there is further work to be done, especially in respect to enjoyment levels of human players when pitted against emotional bots, but unfortunately it looks like none of this ever happened. 
This is the problem with smart people. They tend to move on to bigger and better things and forget about their unstable neurotic creations. However, I think we can say with some confidence that their work is at the very least interesting. There has been plenty of talk about improving AI bots in RTS games. There are some really excellent ones out there, creations that can provide a serious challenge to even the most skilled and experienced players. You hear a lot about their ability, but the one thing you never really hear much about is the levels of enjoyment of actually playing them. It's true that there is fun to be had in overcoming a challenge, but games are about more than that, and it does make me wonder if the very act of winning isn't the only consideration when designing an AI bot. Perhaps our team of researchers were onto something. Is it possible to use emotional models to make AI bots more enjoyable to play against? Rather than choosing between easy, normal or difficult, could we instead choose between chill, stable and easily triggered? It might be fun to play against a bot that is far more interested in building a cool base than they are about raiding yours in the first six minutes. And perhaps once in a while it might be a bit of a laugh to fight a bot that you can essentially annoy it into making suboptimal plays. Who knows, maybe this sort of thing already exists. There are plenty of other studies that examine similar subject matter, and maybe some crafty scripters out there have created a whole series of bots with feelings that I've never heard about. It's something that intrigues me, and I would certainly like to investigate the subject a little further. Anyway, I think that'll do for today. If you found any of this even remotely interesting, then let me know your thoughts in a comment or on the Discord, which is linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, then click the like button. And as usual, if you want more of this sort of thing, then subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you back soon.